All right, my friends, this is my introduction to the Barbell Investment Portfolio in Retirement. This is gonna be awesome. I got, I'll probably do uh, four or five other videos to follow up with this uh, using the spreadsheets that I created. I spent, uh, man, I spent a lot of time doing these spreadsheets, so it's gonna be awesome. So let me share with you what the Barbell Investment Portfolio is when it comes to retirement planning is. You're gonna get a lot out of this for sure. So like any barbell, you got a plate, you got a bar, you got a plate. That's how barbells work. This plate is going to be your cash plate, and this plate is going to be your investment plate. All right, so you got two different plates. Uh, say you got $500,000 for simplicity. And the nice thing about the barbell approach, it really doesn't matter how much you have. What really matters is how much you need. We need about uh, 50,000 a year is our need, income need, all right? So we're gonna get, let's we'll just say for simplicity, 20,000 from Social Security. You see, okay, and the rest we'll need from the portfolio. 30K from the portfolio, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, first of all, our trust yield calculator, and we're gonna see how much is 30 divided into 500. What is that? That, oops, 30 divided into 500 is six percent guys can we take six percent a year oh no oh no so that's six percent all right so what we're going to do when it comes to the barbell approach to investment uh the barbell investment portfolio for retirement is we're going to say we need thirty thousand dollars a year of income and we're going to do one of two things three years or five years cash so we're going to start with five years cash so let's uh what we're going to do is get rid of this all right, so we need five years cash. Why five years? Because we need 30 years, uh, 30,000 a year of income plus five years uh, times five years, which is $150,000 in cash. Plate one. All right, now we go over here, and this is our investment plate, and this can be 350. All right, so basically, what the, the theory is, oops. Uh, I guess I don't need that to say plate up there. Oops, oh, I probably made a big noise when I did that. All right, so we got cash. We'll just say stocks. All right, so the theory is that we're gonna take 50,000 a year, each and every year. All right, and then this can go up and down. And because if it drops like this in the first couple years, we don't care so much, we can avoid the sequence of return risk that everyone's worried about, and rightly so, I might add. The first two, really two years of retirement, if you get swamped by the market, it's, that's bad. And so because we can avoid this happening, we don't need to sell stocks when they're down there. All right, so that's, I mean, ideally, man, I'm telling you, if you can retire in the first couple years, be positive, you're in a much better place, much better place. And that's just by luck. It has nothing to do with your prowess as an investor, doesn't mean anything about price to earnings ratio. It just means you got lucky. You retired in 1982 or you retired in 1975 as opposed to 1973, if that makes sense. So if you retired in 1982 versus someone who retired in 2000, they're not a better or worse investor. They just got lucky. And so here we want to avoid the markets crawl, crashing while we're pulling you know, the market, the money out, four or five, whatever percent a year. So because we're pulling 150,000 a year out, we can avoid this chaos. I hope that makes sense. Now, what happens is this will ev eventually be zeroed out. So at that point, we're hoping this will be up to 500 or so, and we gotta pull the 150,000 back out. And we're right back to 350,000. That's the goal. Now, it's not gonna be as pretty when I show you the spreadsheet says that. It's not gonna look that pretty because some years uh, we do go down, all right? And then we gotta, <laughs> we gotta hope it comes back up. Some years it goes straight up like this. So it's just a lot that goes on there. Um, and what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna use real numbers from 1963 until 2018, all right? So I'm, let's see, that's, uh, that's fit, uh, what is that? So I'm, I'm almost 50 years old, so let's get my trusty calculator. 1960, the 2018 minus 1963, that's 55 year track record. That's, that's a lot. And the reason I wanna use those 1963, we could go back as long as we want. I mean, the S&P, the modern era of portfolio is about 1926. I don't wanna, A, I don't wanna, I don't have the time to go that far back. B, 
the nice thing about using uh, the mid to early 60s, because basically from 1966 to 1982, the markets didn't do much. I mean, it's almost a 0% price to price gain in the, uh, the I think it's the Dow Jones. Um, but when you factor in dividends, it wasn't much. So it had a, a pretty significant, uh, just hardly much return at all. Even inflation was eating away at that anyway. If we had high inflation, relatively low overall returns, uh, even with dividends, we still made money in the market, but it wasn't great. All right, so that's a nice place to start because it kind of gives us a theory, in my opinion, of going forward for the next 10, 15 years as well. Um, okay returns, but not not incredible like we had from 1982 going on. I hope that makes sense. So I'm, I'm kind of saying, look, we're going to use a, a market like a lot of us think we're going into, which is a uh, on the lower end of returns. Not horrific, but just lower ends. And we had a couple of horrific years in there, 73 and 74 come to mind. Uh, but we started the, the era, these 55 years, uh, on a positive note, but just it wasn't nearly as good as like if we started in 1982 or something like that, simply because the markets from 1982 on just you, you kicked butt and took names. Um, the, the info on bonds doesn't go back as far as I'd like to see in terms of without really digging in. I just frankly don't feel like doing that. So 1963, that's a 55 year time frame, and, and that, that's going to be good. That'll work just fine. It's not going to be perfect. I get it. Uh, but in terms of the market condition, I think it's very amenable or meanable uh, to where we are today, which is a potentially lower return environment for sure. I do believe that. And so what we're going to do, we're going to do a couple things. Uh, we're going to do a 7% distribution yield, which is DY's distribution yield. Now, distribution yield is not your interest. That's your money you're pulling off the portfolio. We're going to do a 6%. We'll do a 5%. I think I even have 6.5 and 5.5. So we're going to do them all. We're going to do three years of cash and five years cash. All right. And if we only do three years cash here, that means we have more to invest here because we need $30,000 a year. Uh, we'd only need 90,000 here, if that makes sense. And then we could have 410 here, all right? So, I mean, there's a lot going on here. A lot of different scenarios are running. Three years cash, five years cash, 7% distribution, six, five, and all that in between. I was gonna do something else too. Oh, and then we're also gonna do where, where we drop our income needs by 10% after, year 10. Now, I might elaborate on that by another 10% after year 20. I haven't done that yet, but I might. We'll see how it shakes out first. But anyway, um, it, it's going to be interesting. I think you're going to get a lot out of this video for sure, the series of videos for sure. And, and, oh, a couple things. I'm only using the S&P 500. Uh, the, inter, the, the track record of international stocks, don't. The, we don't have that big of a, 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 a as easy to look at track record. And uh, what else I was gonna say on that? Uh, I forgot. Uh, so I'm only using the S&P 500, not using small caps, just using the S&P 500. Um, you can uh, extrapolate more for diversification if you're gonna use small and international, which you should in your real portfolio. But I just wanna use the S&P 500 because I don't wanna kill myself with all this. But we're, we're just simply saying at the end of the day, this is what happens if you had cash, this is what happened if an S&P 500, and this is what happened with various cash scenarios, uh, three and five years of cash, and how much of a distribution, and when would you run out of money? Uh, that's pretty much what I wanna start with. So we're gonna go, uh, and I'll start putting some of these videos out uh, tomorrow. I thought I'd have it done today, but man, folks, woo! We got, uh, when you got a daughter in college, you gotta start unmoving, unpacking her dorm, uh, go down there, and, uh, and then you have to take her and your beautiful wife out to dinner too, so. It's tough being Josh, man. It's tough, but uh, you get by. And I still found time to do this video here tonight and put it up here this evening because I respect your time. And I don't want to lose you as a subscriber. If I don't do videos, you might say, that guy, Josh, man, he's yesterday's news. And I don't want to be yesterday's news. So I'm going to keep doing it, but I'll get these out there tomorrow. I think you'll like what you see. All right, see ya.